So for those of you seeking to conceive children, uh, mecunopurines might be an interesting choice uh, if you're interested in exploring non-prescription compounds. However, I should mention that anytime you consume a substance that increases dopamine by mimicking dopamine or acting as a direct precursor to dopamine, there's almost inevitably a crash or a reduction in the baseline in dopamine that we referred to previously. So many people who take mercunipurines feel really elevated, really motivated, really alert, all the sorts of things that one would expect from a dopaminergic drug, which mercunipurines is, and then they feel a low or a reduction in drive and excitement and enthusiasm after the drug wears off, just like they would with any other dopamine increasing compound. For that reason, many people have turned to the use of L-tyrosine. L-tyrosine is an amino acid precursor to L-dopa. So it lies further up the dopamine synthesis pathway. And nowadays it's very common because L-tyrosine is sold over the counter in the United States that people will take L-tyrosine as a way to get more energized, alert, and focused. And indeed there are data that L-tyrosine will accomplish that. L-tyrosine is typically taken in capsule form or powder form, anywhere from 500 to 750 to 1,000 milligrams. It is a potent stimulus for increasing dopamine. And the time scale for increasing dopamine is about 30 to 45 minutes after ingestion, dopamine levels start to peak. The classic study that really nailed down the fact that tyrosine has this effect was published way back in 1983, Journal of Clinical Endocrinology and Metabolism, that directly compared L-tyrosine supplementation with tryptophan ingestion on plasma dopamine and, and serotonin, tryptophan being a precursor to serotonin. And indeed, what they found is that ingestion of L-tyrosine can increase the amount of dopamine circulating in the blood and in the brain too, of course. The tyrosine ingestion induced dopamine increases within 45 minutes, and they were short lasting. After about 30 minutes, the effect had dissipated, meaning the levels of dopamine had dropped down to baseline. And even though they didn't look at levels of baseline dopamine past that time point, the expectation based on everything we know about dopamine biology is that it would then drop below baseline due to the depletion of the readily reservable pool of dopamine vesicles that we talked about way back at the beginning of this episode. 